Some hospitals across the country are already putting artificial intelligence to the test. UC San Diego Health is one of the first in the nation to integrate AI technology into the electronic health records. Clinicians there are now using AI to draft responses to their patients. Chief Medical and Digital Officer at UC San Diego Health, Dr. Christopher Longhurst, joins me now for more on this. Dr. Longhurst, thanks so much for coming on. It's so fascinated to hear what you're doing over there. So. Walk me through this. UC San Diego has been using this new AI technology for the past few months now. So how exactly does it work? And what are some of your biggest takeaways so far? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. We're really excited about the promise of this new general artificial intelligence to help our patients and our doctors. Our physicians are experiencing unprecedented levels of demand from patients, messaging, and burnout. And so we thought that AI might be able to help. What are we finding so far? It can, but we have to keep the human in the loop. It's really important that we're not sending messages without a physician reviewing them first. So can it make our doctors more efficient, draft messages that are empathetic, uh, and do it in a timely manner? Absolutely. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. In fact, we're seeing hallucinations and errors that our doctors have to fix. So it's very early. We're doing this in a measured and careful way. Yeah, definitely not autopilot. Now, um, a recent study found a panel of licensed healthcare professionals preferred ChatGPT's responses 79% of the time when compared to written responses from actual physicians, and they rated ChatGPT replies as more empathetic. What's your reaction to that, and what kind of feedback are you getting from your patients? Well, when we uh, published that study, the, the headline suggested that the AI chatbot might be more empathetic than doctors, but that's not what I took away at all. In fact, what I know is that any physician given the time could draft a very empathetic response in the right scenario, but the chatbot can do it very quickly. And so to me, this was really about time because the chatbot can generate these responses in a short period of time, which our physicians cannot do. In fact, we worry about something called pajama time, which is our doctors spending time at home after dinner answering messages to patients that otherwise should be time with family. And so we think that the chatbot can help to draft empathetic messages and do it in a timely manner for the doctors to review. It's kind of like an assistant. One of our physicians actually told us it made her feel less alone. It was like having a virtual nurse helping her all the time. I love that. Now, we also just heard from Jeffrey Hinton saying that doctors assisted by AI will be able to ma make better diagnoses, but that mistakes are also inevitable. What's your take on that? I think Jeffrey Hinton is exactly right. I'm excited about the promise of this technology to help doctors make better, more consistent, highly reliable diagnoses. In fact, he's not wrong that misdiagnosis and delayed diagnosis is the number one cause of lawsuits, legal lawsuits against physicians in this country. And so we know we need to do better and the computer should be able to help us do that. It's the unfulfilled pr promise of electronic health records, but it's not gonna come tomorrow. I think we have to very carefully test this. It's not because doctors are worried about new technology, it's because doctors are worried about their patients that we have to do this in a careful, thoughtful, measured and disciplined way. Yeah, so important. And I know at UC San Diego, AI is being used to help predict which patients are more at risk for sepsis? How successful has that been? Well, there's been successes and failures over the last decade in trying to do that. We're really excited because we've been, in a, been able to integrate different data streams, not just the electronic health record data, which might be entered by a nurse every hour or two, but also the bedside monitor data. And as a result, we're finding that it's much more predictive. In fact, our observed to expected mortality in our emergency department has dropped since implementation of this AI powered alert. And so we're very optimistic. We're still studying it. But one thing to, to think about is the fact that the clinical record is really 99% text data. So only about 1% of the data in the electronic health record is discrete medication data and other things. So this new generative AI that reads text is gonna be really powerful in helping us to improve sepsis alerts and mortality prediction and all sorts of other uh, uh, things that will help our physicians. And Dr. Longhurst, I'm out of time, but quickly, what are you watching for as AI develops? Well, I'm really bullish on exactly what Jeffrey Hinton uh, described, which is uh, an AI that's going to help every physician without harming any patients. And so we're gonna have to carefully uh, research this. I think the next three to five years are going to be as impactful as the introduction of penicillin. Wow, Dr. Christopher Longhurst, we so appreciate you coming on, thank you.
Thank you very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.